to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. And he himself is our peace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 14. We welcome you today to our study of the peace of God. Does your life have the peace of God? Do you have that absence of conflict, that, that complete calm that God wants to bring into your life? Friend, if you don't have that, we encourage you today to join our study, to continue with us as we study on this idea. And as always, we want to encourage you to make sure you've got your Bible handy and out. If you don't have it, locate it as we're going to look to the Word of God on this wonderful subject today. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. We begin today by asking the question, how is peace obtained? Now, in our last lesson, we talked about the content of peace, what peace is, how it's available, how it comes to man. If you haven't, if you weren't able to watch that lesson, you can check it out on our website, Peace of God, number one. But today we're thinking about how is this peace obtained. And friend, let's realize this. The peace that surpasses all understanding, that can guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 verse 7, that peace is available for everybody to have. Listen to these words. Luke chapter 2 verse number 14. The Bible says, glory to God in the highest. At the birth of Jesus, the, the angel said this, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Jesus coming to this earth and his birth brought that peace and made it available for every person alive. His leaving left that peace with us. John 14, verse 27, as Jesus prepared to leave this earth through his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I'm not giving you a sense of a worldly peace that might be here for a little while and then gone or, or dependent on the situation or who's in governmental power or how much you have or don't have. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus said, I'm leaving my peace with you and I'm giving that peace to you. It came when Christ came to earth. He left it with us and it stayed when he left this earth because that peace is the message of the gospel that is available for everybody. Friend, you can have that. That peace is something that God wants you to have today. And so how do I get that peace? If that peace is available for everybody, my next question is, where's that peace at? How do I obtain this peace? Where is it located? How can I get my hands on it? Well, friend, the good news is Jesus himself is our peace. I want you to look at a couple of Bible verses with me that, that drive the point home that the embodiment of this peace today is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Look in John chapter 16 and notice what the word of God says here. John says, or Jesus says, these things I've spoken to you that, listen now, that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you'll have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Jesus' victory over death, his victory over Satan, his victory over sin and all that was haunting man. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. You can overcome the world. That doesn't mean there won't be the occasional problem or trouble. But Jesus said this, in me, you can have peace. Friend, we've never been promised that there won't be challenges and difficulties and, and hurdles that we have to overcome in the world. What we have been promised is this. In Christ, you can have ultimate peace, meaning that no matter what happens, no matter the situation, no matter the difficulty one finds himself in, because we are in a relationship with God and because this is the temporary side and we're going to live with God forever, Friend, you can have the peace that passes all understanding. As we think about that, that peace being, Jesus being the embodiment of that peace and that peace being obtained in him, listen to these powerful words that illustrate this in Ephesians 2.14. The Bible says, For he, Jesus himself, is our peace. What do you mean? He's made both one. In context, the both are Jew and Gentile, every person from every nationality. He's made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. There is no longer a wall separating men from men, no longer a wall separating men from God. Jesus has broken that barrier down. How? Listen again to it. Such a beautiful idea. Jesus himself is our peace. Friend, you want peace. You want a life of happiness. You want a life of joy. You want a life that, that regardless of the difficulty, regardless of the problem, and, and even in the face of it, can still have calm and assurance and, and hope and peace. Here's how. Jesus himself is our peace. Where Christ is not, there is no peace. Where the Lord lives, and if he lives in your life and mine, true peace can be had there. My well, friend, when did that peace come to earth? We're talking about Christ being our peace and, and that peace being available to all men and something that we can actually make tangible, get a hold of, and use in our life. At what moment in time did that peace become available for all men? Did you know that there was an exact moment in time when the peace of God became a reality for every person, and that still exists today. When was it? The Bible records this of Jesus. And by him, by Jesus, to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Now don't miss this. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. When did that peace that we're talking about become available? Friend, that peace occurred at the cross of Jesus Christ. 
I want you to stop and think about that for just a moment. One of the most gruesome, horrific moments that you might could think of in a person's life is the moment of their death. And think about the torture and the cruelty that Jesus went through. Jesus, he suffered, he agonized, he was beaten. He did all of that, not because he was a bad person, not because he was a criminal, but because people mocked and they were jealous of him and, and he stood up to the religious leaders of their day and, and, and he suffered all that, not because of sins of his own, but for my sins and yours. And when Jesus, when, when, you, when they took Jesus and laid him on that, that wooden cross and when they took that hammer and they, you could hear the, the hammer hit the nail spikes as they drive him into Jesus' hand. As they took that hammer, and, and, and you can hear the, the metal on the metal as it hits the nail spike in Jesus' feet. As they, as they place that cross in the ground, and as he hangs there, and he suffers, and he dies in agony. Do you know what happened right then and there? God and man who had been separated because of sin. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. God's over here. Man's over here. There is that separation of sin. When Jesus died on the cross, the way back to God, peace with God, was made available by the blood of Jesus on the cross. What a beautiful picture. And friend, that, that peace that happened at the cross of Christ, the greatest moment in the history of the world, that's something you can have and I can have today. But then I want you to think about this idea. When we think about how peace is obtained, please understand that that peace comes to those who love God's teaching and love God's law. This is not something that is just naturally going to happen. To every, it's here. It's available. God wants everybody to have it. But that peace comes to those who submit to and love the law of Almighty God. Listen to these words. In the long ago, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 165, such a beautiful statement about peace. Great peace, not just peace, but the abundance of peace. Have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. If peace comes through the blood of Jesus and, and there's the connection of loving God's law, what, what's the connection there? Well, friend, to love Jesus and to follow him, do we not realize we have to do what he says? Then think of these words with me. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. You're my friends if you do whatever I ask. John 15, verse 14. He's the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Hebrews 5, verses 7 through 9. It's, it's not every person who just gets a warm, fuzzy feeling and looks up in their heart and says, Lord, Lord, that's going to heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. I've got to love God's law, love it enough that I'll do it, that I'll follow it, that I'll put its precepts in my heart and mind so that that peace, I've got to love the law of God so that peace can be available in my life. And then, friend, by the justification, by the saving power of faith in Jesus Christ, peace is brought to mankind. Listen to the words of Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, and in the book of Romans, Romans 1, 5, Romans 16, 26, when we talk about faith from beginning to end in the book of Romans, the Bible says it's the obedience of faith. And so an obedient trust in God, having been justified by that faith, that obedient trust in God, listen to this. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When one is obedient to the faith, many of the priests, the Bible says in Acts 6 verse 7, were obedient to the faith, that obedient type of faith. When I've got a, a trust in God that, that, that causes me to say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Acts 9 verse 4 through 6, and then I get up and do that. Acts 22 16, 
that type of faith, when you've got that type of faith, friend, you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we think about this idea, friend, do you have that type of active, obedient faith? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7. Do, do you have a type of faith like, the, like Saul of Tarsus, who, when confronted with truth, would say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Here am I, send me. Acts chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 6. Like those on Pentecost, are we ready to be, when, when we're cut to the heart with the word of God, do we respond by saying, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2, verse 37. Acts 16, verses 29 through 31. And so we need that obedient, active type of faith to really have the peace God wants us to have. But friend, let's get to the heart and core of the matter about peace. How is that peace obtained? Peace is obtained when my sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Friend, when a person, chaos, confusion, the drama, the, 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 the difficulty, all of that is related to the sin and the problems it brings in our life. When I've got those sins out of my life, when I've been forgiven of my sin, friend, you can't begin to imagine a life of greater peace than that. Listen to these words. Luke chapter 7, to a woman that Jesus healed, Jesus said this, Then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. When you've been saved, when your sins have been forgiven, when you've done what the Bible says, and by the grace of God, you're saved in the blood of Jesus, friend, there's no greater moment of peace than when one knows he's obeyed the gospel and he's right with Almighty God. And, and, and after that moment, when, when we read in the Bible of moments like that, when people put on the Lord Jesus Christ, they obey the gospel, like in the book of Acts, when they do what they did in the first century to, to be saved and become a Christian. It's moments like those that you see the grandeur and the climax of peace in a person's life. Listen to these words. Acts chapter 8. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch are riding in the chariot. He's teaching him about Jesus from the prophets. He learns something he must do. In the distance, he sees that opportunity. Hey, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Philip says to him, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He acknowledges Jesus as Lord and Savior. Uh, Philip stops the chariot. They both get down out of the chariot. Uh, they go down to the water. He baptizes him. And the Bible says that man went on his way rejoicing. Why? Because peace comes after conversion. Now, when they came up out of the water, Acts 8, 41, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. After one's been saved, after conversion, greatest moment of peace and rejoicing that a person can have in his life. But friend, as we think about this idea of peace, not only do, can we understand what peace is and how powerful that is, and not only is that available to all people, but friend, peace is something that not only happens, but it's something that is maintained. It's something that you work on all your life. Peace is a lot. Peace with God and our Lord Jesus Christ is not just point in time action. It's a lifelong pursuit. And I think part of that, if we can understand that, this is something I'm going to work on. This is something I'm going to pursue. This is something I'm going to chase after the rest of my life. I think that motivates us to live for Jesus. Listen to what Paul said about the pursuit of peace. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Paul said to Christians in Rome, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Well, what a powerful phrase. Let us pursue the things 
which make for peace. What does that teach me about peace? It's not, it's not just, it, it, we, we receive peace at the blood of Jesus and in point in time that happens, but it's not just point in time action. Pursuit, the, the peace and the pursuit of it is a lifelong venture. Every day that I wake as a child of God, I've got to have the mindset today I'm going to chase after that peace. Today, I'm going to keep laying hold of that peace. Today, I'm going to pursue to the best of my ability to live a life of peace with God and the things which will create peace and edification with others. And so when we become saved, we don't stop chasing peace. We keep running harder after it. We pursue it with greater strength and greater diligence. Well, how then do you chase after peace? How's that? What are some things that help me to pursue it in my life? Friend, being, being spiritually minded, having the right mindset is one of the ways that you bring peace into your life. Uh, listen to these words. Romans 8 verse 6. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. But listen to this. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8, verse 6. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Friend, you want to maintain and really chase after peace in your life. Don't be carnally minded. Don't, don't be worldly minded, pleasure minded, lust minded, chasing after the next impulse sensation. You want the pursuit of peace to be real? Be spiritually minded. What does it mean to be spiritually minded? Your mind is focused on God. Your mind realizes, in my mind I realize, this old world, this old flesh, everything that I see in now, in this physical, tangible, touchable world, this is the physical side. This is the temporal side. This is one day not going to exist. It's the spiritual mind to focus on spiritual things, heavenly things, things beyond this life, things of God and of Christ and, and of holiness. If I can get my mind on the mind of Christ, Philippians 2 verse 5, and focus on spiritual things, then friend, that pursuit of peace is going to come so much easier. Another way to maintain peace in our life and to chase after it and pursue it every day, another big help in doing that is this. If I'm going to maintain peace in my life, I've got to learn to overcome worry. Now, friend, this is a challenge for every person. It's a challenge for every person to not let the struggles and the troubles and the, the difficulties we face kind of bog us down in the worry and the stress that we create in our life. To chase after peace, to let that peace live in my heart, I've got to learn to overcome worry. Look at what Paul said by the inspiration of the Spirit. Be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7 in your Bible. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and listen to the result. When I overcome worry, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Friend, if I want to continue to run after peace and live a life of peace, I can't let the things of this life flood my mind, distort my mind, consume my thinking and my way of life to the point that I'm all tied up in knots about that. We've got to sometimes learn to turn it over to God. Cast all your cares upon Him. He cares for you. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, we've got to learn. And it's hard. We all realize it is. Be anxious for nothing. Instead, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Let God help you with it. Don't, don't get worked up in anxiety over it. Rather, let God help you with it. And then, the peace of God can guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And friend, as we think about this idea about having peace in our life, Please realize, I've got to continue to live faithful to the Lord to maintain peace. When I stop obeying Jesus and when I stop living according to the way God wants me to live, 
peace begins to leave from my life as well. Obedience to God and his teaching helps to maintain peace in my life. How do I know that? Listen to what Paul said just one verse later in Philippians 4 verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And watch the result. And the God of peace will be with you. You want that God to be in your life, the God who is the source of peace? Continue what you've heard and learned and read and saw and, and studied in the Bible. Continue doing what God wants you to do. And the God of peace is going to fill your heart more and more. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2, the proverb writer said, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life, and listen to this, and peace they will add to you. Friend, as we think about and as we bring this idea to a beautiful climax, as we think about how peace is maintained, please realize that being faithful to God in his kingdom, that helps to maintain peace. Do you remember this powerful verse? Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Inside God's kingdom, we have all the blessings you can imagine. As I seek first the kingdom of God, joy and peace and all that God wants to give me are available in his kingdom. And so we ask you two questions today as it relates to the peace of God. Number one, do you have that peace? Have you submitted your life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary and brought peace to the world at the cross. Have you obeyed the gospel? Acts 18, 8. Many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Secondly, are you chasing that peace every day? Is it a pursuit in your life? Are you trying to live faithful to the Lord? Friend, if not, if you're struggling with peace or you don't have it, look at your life and ask, number one, am I a Christian? Number two, Am I living like God wants me to? We hope you'll join us more next time as we study the gospel together. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 6 Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.